Hello everyone. It's James again. And before I start today's topic. I just want to quickly say. All work in this video contains 100% original content of and by myself James Smith, otherwise known as Bigood4000, and was uniquely created with normal software, by myself James Smith. As I purchased commercial rights from normal to produce my unique and original video with this software. Commentary is uniquely my own thoughts, feelings, and expressions. Now that I have that out of the way. I do hope everyone is doing fantastic and their day is blessed. I want to thank all of you that are participating on this channel. I really do appreciate it. And it's helping a great deal of people that are feeling alone in this process of dealing with toxic people in their lives. Or being literally alone because of breaking contact with such individuals. So again. I thank you. With that said. If you haven't subscribed yet. Please do so. To be a part of this channel's growth. And don't forget to click the little bell to be notified each and every time I make a new video. And don't forget to share and like to let YouTube know this content is important to you. And so others can find this material that are looking for it. And if you would like to support even further. You can do so by the way of Patreon. And if you are already supporting by the way of Patreon. I humbly say thank you. It really does mean a lot to me. With that said. Today's topic is. Narcissism. Munchausen Syndrome Link. First let's talk a moment about Munchausen Syndrome. What is it? Well in a nutshell it's when someone finds comfort or gets supply from being in a medical setting. So they might not only fake illnesses. They might induce illnesses. Which can lead to serious medical problems. Just so they can go through medical treatments. And then we have Munchausen Syndrome by proxy where usually a parent or parents either train their kid or kids to fake illnesses and or they induce their kids to really become ill so the parent or parents can gain supply from the attention and medical treatments given to their kids well how does this fit into narcissism well to discuss this a bit more deeper let me tell you more about my story some of you may know some of this based on some of my earlier videos many years ago some of you might not know. But with that said. I was raised in a home where my mother left my father. She did everything in the court to make my father seem like a bad father when he wasn't. And eventually I believe because of the stress of it all. He passed away from a heart attack. All of this happened when myself and my golden child brother were quite young. And for those of you that don't know. The golden child is the sibling that takes most of the narcissist's parents' toxic traits. And is basically trained to become a clone of the narcissist parent. They easily go along with the wrong things the narcissist parent says and does. Then you have the scapegoat. Which is the kid that questions things. Sees things as there's something wrong with this picture. They have a great amount of emotions. They have a great amount of empathy and care for others. And the narcissist parent sees this and slates this particular kid for mistreatment. And endless smear campaigns. So no one will believe what is going on in this home if this particular kid speaks up asking for help. You see. Growing up in my home. There was constant chaos as many of you are familiar with that grew up in such toxic homes. However. One of the things that were constant was my mother needing to go to the hospital a lot. Now here's the thing. Sometimes medical issues. Can't be avoided. And things do happen. I think many of us have been there at one point or another. However. The difference with my mother was she seemed to thrive at the hospital. And when I say that I'm not meaning health wise or physically. I'm talking about her knack for talking to medical staff. Her enjoyment she seemed to get when in such a situation. It was as if she enjoyed being there. Then I would hear stories about my grandmother being very much the same. And how my mother was in the hospital a lot as a child. Now when I was young I wasn't sure what to make of this information. But as an adult I started to see a pattern. You see. 
my mother would live a very non-active life. And that's putting it mildly. The doctors would tell her that she needed to exercise more. And my mother would either reply that she is exercising. Which was an obvious lie. Or she would have excuses as to why she couldn't. But the real reason was. That if she actually worked on her health. She wouldn't get the supply and attention she so desperately craved. She was given a pill to regulate this bodily function and a pill to regulate that bodily function. Which over time of taking a dozen pills a day with no exercise. And a bad diet. Even more serious health problems would start to happen. Now to backtrack a moment. I remember as a young kid. If I had a really bad cold. And my mother was going to take me to the doctor. She would coach me on what to say. And how to moan and groan. In order to get the best result from the doctor to be able to help me. I remember questioning her about this. Asking her if it was a dishonest thing to do. I remember as a young child half-heartedly going on along with it. Moaning and groaning a few times and then feeling silly doing all of this nonsense. Now looking back on it. I believe my mother wanted a more drastic answer to a common cold or stomach bug. Such as being admitted to the hospital with invasive procedures. Luckily this never happened. I think based on part of smart doctors relying on test results and possibly being able to see through my coached moaning and groaning. You see. My mother was always on the lookout for wherever and from whomever she could get narcissistic supply from. No matter if it was from a medical situation. Or getting my brother and I to argue with each other. Or her manipulating someone to do something for her. It didn't matter. But with that being said. Depending on a narcissist's upbringing. They will latch on to something that they love getting supply from. Some narcissists grow up in a home where pretending to care about helping others for charity is a big thing. Now I'm not saying everyone involved in charities do this. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is as an example. Some might grow up in a home where this might be their outlet for narcissistic supply. Faking to be a nice person. Getting in the middle of everyone's personal problems like at a church or charity situation. Where they can manipulate the people around them like chess pieces on a chessboard. Others might find hoarding and all that comes with it as a way to get supply. Now again. I know there are hoarders out there that aren't narcissists at all. And their problem really bothers them and they are doing their best to shake this problem. But the truth is there are hoarders out there that on the other side of things that are indeed narcissists. Or at least floating somewhere in that category. And they love people coming to endlessly try to help them fix this problem. And the feeding on the pain it causes others that live with them. Like their kids. And then there are some that find comfort when they are in the hospital. Again this is something that is usually first experienced at an early age. They get a kick of dopamine from being cared for. Tested on. And feeling important. And they get addicted to that feeling. So just like someone that is an addict. They do what they can to recreate that feeling again and again and again. Even if that means recreating that experience with their kids. And training them into being sick when they aren't. And this link between this problem and narcissism. Is because of the simple fact. The person that is doing this to themselves. Will use a series of lies and manipulation to achieve their desired goal. And they don't care who these lies or manipulations hurt. Even if it hurts themselves. Furthermore when they are dragging their kids into the middle of this. Their kid is only seen as a means to get supply. That's it. There is no parental care there. Of wanting to do the best for them and wanting to protect them. It's what can I get out of them and how can I go about it. Is pretty much all the parent is thinking. No empathy. No care. And no love. And the sad part is. The parent in this situation will fake love. They will cry. And say how much they want to help their sick child. They will call organizations such as make a wish to give this child a fun experience while they are so called battling all of these health problems. Now the sad fact is. 
because this inducing of medical problems usually has a bad outcome for the person doing this to themselves. Or for the child they are doing this by way of proxy. There was a story in the news a while back where a mother said her daughter had a terminal disease. And they had her become police chief for a day. She got to be a firefighter for a day. And she got to battle her favorite comic book foes. When in reality it was all one big lie. Sadly this young girl passed away. However, I believe her doctor retired and a new doctor took over her siblings cases of having all of these rare problems too. Only to find out it was all a lie. They went back and did some research and found out the young girl that passed away never had any of these problems that were listed. And the mother was promptly arrested. Now one might ask. How did this young girl pass away if she didn't have any of these problems? Well, if you are being neglected in certain ways that will get a result of mimicking certain illnesses it can take a toll on one's health. Such a toll that is life-threatening. It's my belief that a great many that have Munchausen syndrome pass away early from inducing health problems in their life just from simply neglecting their own health as a starting point. But it all comes down to supply. 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 Here's what a lot of people having trouble wrapping their mind around with in regards to narcissism. Why would a parent or parents sabotage their kid's education let's say? Or why would a parent or parents start a smear campaign against their own kids? What's the gain? It doesn't make any sense to them. They don't see the upside. By someone doing such a thing. But then you see a news story of a parent being arrested for Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Where they lied about illnesses in their kids. All to seemingly get attention and supply. When in reality both are one in the same. You see. It goes back to many that talk about narcissists like they are great white sharks. Constantly swimming the ocean. Scanning and looking for something it can attack and something it can eat. That's all the shark does. And it's been doing it so long it's a master at it. And when they take such a predator and they put it in captivity of some kind. Oftentimes they just roll over and die one day. Why? Who knows? But if I were guessing. It would be its constant need to hunt and attack aren't being met. And throwing a bunch of meat into the water for it to eat doesn't cut it. There is no action. No thrill there for the shark for it to use its skills that have been honed for generations. This indeed sums up the narcissist. The narcissist has to manipulate and turn this person against that person. Or ruin this for that person. Or ruin that for that person. And to gaslight this person. Or and project to that person in order for them to feel anything inside. And sadly for some. They find some of these needs being met by the attention they get from medical procedures and doctor visits. Now please know this. Again. A great many of these people develop other problems that usually are life-threatening. Because of years of years of self-neglect. So after a while they may not be faking it anymore. They may have real problems. But even then. You don't see the sense of urgency to change their diet. To start to exercise. Or to do anything positive that can help reverse some of these problems they now face. Even when their doctor lets them know how serious some of these problems are. And the reason why they don't change is the need for the supply is just too great. On one hand they are faced with a life-threatening problem and ways to help lessen these risks. And on the other end their need to get supply. And in most cases it's my belief the need for supply wins out. Now when dealing with kids in the care of such individuals. These kids are at great risk. As we've seen in numerous stories over the years. Then one asks what can be done? And my answer to this is more fair child custody laws. Again. I think. Family court and child support and custody should only become a thing when all other resources have been exhausted and even then. There should be no winners or losers in most cases. But the child is given a fair shot to spend time with both parents. Now again. There are cases where this wouldn't be possible. As every case would be different. However. 
not only in my personal case, but cases I've seen on the news. It's usually a single parent doing this to their child. Now I'm sure there are many instances where there are two parents in on the act. But I'm going by what we are seeing as a society. And I believe this is the case because narcissists love to triangulate and seclude the target off and away from anyone that can help them. And the family court system is used in many cases by a narcissist parent to make that happen. One parent may be smeared as the bad parent. And the real bad parent ends up with custody if the child and can do pretty much anything they want. Including Munchausen syndrome by proxy. However. Assuming one parent might have some sense about themselves. If things were made more fair in average situations. This might give any young child a chance to compare their living situations and see that when I'm living with one parent. They keep telling me I'm sick. But when I'm living with the other parent. Yes. I go to the doctor as needed. And I'm cared for. However. I'm encouraged to run and play. And exercise. Or the ability to join a baseball league or a tumbling class. Many activities that young children like and enjoy. And as I've said before. I will say again. Fairness is a narcissist's kryptonite. They can't run their game as well when things are set up fairly. They can't control their targets. In this case their children when things are set up fairly. If things were set up fairly it would get to the point where narcissists a great many of them would see having children or developing families to run these games on as problematic and too much work. Now this doesn't mean narcissists will altogether abandon these roots. But it would for sure make it harder for them to do what they do. And that is using their children for narcissistic supply. Watch some of the news stories that happen with this theme in it. It's usually one parent that was able to control the narrative while they shuffled their child from hospital to hospital. And nowhere was the other parent to be found. And yes. The other parent could be off somewhere being as dysfunctional as the first parent is being. But there's also the chance this parent was lied about and pushed out of the child's life because they knew the truth. And if given half a chance would steer their child along a path and road of success and possibly a happy life. You know it greatly saddens me. You hear about these stories. People talk about them and they say how sad it is. But no one tries to figure out how to fix this problem so it won't happen again or at least as frequent. It seems like they are on to the next story. Instead of diving deep to find out what's happening and why. Well if you want to know. Ask those of us that survived such a home. And in what we have to say. I think you will find many answers. With that said. That's all I have for now. Please tell me what you think in the comment section below. With that being said. I do hope your day is blessed. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.